opening my tea party just for you. Who is that? It's Didi, now the so-called anime enthusiast fox. It's time for more Ark Knights. Uh, today, in particular, we're going to be continuing chapter seven. But I do want to know, it will be a pretty short stream today, only because I do have to prepare for my the kitten that I'm fostering to meet their potential adopter. So I hope you don't mind. But I do want to give some updates before we do get started. I have made her E1 level 60, and I also am almost done E1-ing Lessing. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to get him to E1 soon. I just need the LMD and then I should be able to. And that way I can also upgrade his skill. I think he would be another good DPS. I know people have recommended him before, so I just wanted to give an update on that. And hi, Watcher. Hi, Relia. Really. Welcome to the stream. So I guess uh, we might as well get started on, not that one, chapter seven. We're currently on seven, six. Oh, I'm worried. Okay, it'll be fine. Let me see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's so many. I'm glad those two are blocked right up there. Put two in front and then right there as well. Oh, it's gonna be another stressful one. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so two. I think this should be fine. Do gravel. Yeah, let's try this. I'm not even sure whether we're going to have. Chernobog underground base. 10.30 a.m. Were you waiting for me here? Yes. It took me a long time to find you. We'll begin the operation after we finish collecting all the environmental information. Before that, it'll benefit you to hear exactly what's going on inside Chernobog's core city. Ami is a bit tied up on the scene, so she won't be able to join this discussion. You've already read the information in the mission briefing, but that kind of information is not good enough for a mind like yours. What's a mind like mine? Did you finally realize that you need me? I'm glad you see me as more than a simple battlefield commander. You might not remember, but I do. I remember you had quite a talent for heating up rations by pouring boiling water directly into your mouth at four in the morning. What? what? If you don't believe me, you can try for yourself. But skip the chatter. We don't have much time. Rhodes Island and the LGD work together to take down Reunion and neutralize the forces controlled by Mephisto and, Clank and Crown Slayer. After that reunion's deployments in Lungman fell apart completely. Amir reported to me that you had a difficult fight with a Frost Nova, an infector serving reunion as leader of a special squad at the bottom of Lungman. The battle ended in your victory. There was no victor. No, I wouldn't call that a victory. I understand. According to the data from PRTS, you had the cooperation of our operators when you brought the enemy's body back to Rhodes Island for treatment. I don't consider an enemy, Dr. Didina. Distinguish your friends from your foes. No, you might get the wrong idea, but you must hear me out. Hmm? I'm not trying to blame you, Dr. Didina. Amiya told me what happened between you and the enemy commander. Only those who were there at the time had the information to decide what to do. I don't have the right to overreach and criticize your judgment. You tried to understand the motives of that infected. You were willing to bear the consequences for the things she, Frost Nova, did. That is what you did. If you plan to use this method to make sense of the suffering in this world, I have no reason to blame you. 
I am even willing to vouch for you before the operators of Rose Island. Dr. Didina, make your own decisions, and I will try not to interfere. Oh, how, how unexpected. After that, I will determine the part of the responsibility that belongs to Rose Island. Your powers and responsibilities complement one another. Distinguish your enemies from your friends. Those are your words, not mine. I had a feeling that was going to be the case, that that's what we said. At least considering the hints that we got about the doctor and what he was like in the past, I'm kind of, uh... <laughs> we must have been pretty cold of a person. If you really want to breathe as one. You're actually siding with me? I never said that. More accurately, Frost Nova and her Yeti squad were a guerrilla team of elite infected. Right now, there are still two elite forces that Reunion is still able to mobilize. These guerrilla warriors are the first. The second is the Sarcas mercenary, W and her team of cell swords. According to my intel, W used some underhanded tactics to seize leadership of the Sarcas mercenaries working with Reunion. We don't have to we don't have time to go over what should be common historical knowledge, but let me say this frankly. Sarcas mercenaries are unreliable. A problem W faces just as much as Reunion. Sarcas mercenaries are unlike normal agency mercenaries. They are the overflowing military might of Kazdil, spilling out across the land. Trying to control them is an act of folly. It will only anger the forces backing them. You seem to have a pretty deep understanding of the sarcasm. I haven't even gotten to the most important part. The point is, the infected gorillas of Yeti Squad are completely different from the sarcasm mercenaries. There are no similarities between them in terms of their form, organization, behavior, or creed. Before joining Reunion's ranks, they were an independent guerrilla force of infected and their prestige was even greater among certain groups of infected than that of Reunion. And before they formed this guerrilla force, they used to be a part of the mighty Ursus military. The guerrillas of the Northwestern Tundra? I'm not sure where you learned that piece of information, Doctor. But I color me impressed. Yeah, be impressed! I mean, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Though that piece of information itself is fairly basic, I am relieved that you're able to proactively gather intel on your own. You just had to tack that bit into the end. Why does it feel like you're poking fun at me? I only give what you deserve. We've arrived at the foundations of the industrial sector at Chernobog's core city. Next, we'll lead three teams through the complex underground passages. Take the sewer pipes into the industrial layer and come up in the heart of the core city. Be aware that any enemies you see patrolling these areas are not the ordinary reunion thugs you're used to fighting. We will meet rigorously trained soldiers. Reunion soldiers trained in the tactics of Ursus's own army by the guerrillas. Our recon operators discover that communication networks have been forcefully cut off within the core city. Rather, it seems that Reunion didn't even try to maintain these channels. That means they have another way to communicate with each other then, huh? This is a severe constraint upon modern day squads who rely on the most common modes of communication. What this means is Reunion either already has some special way of communicating- Hey, that's what I said! Or they simply aren't prepared to fight. Based on what we saw in Chernobog a month ago, don't expect that second scenario. But if the communication is cut off, the lower ranking Reunion members won't receive direct commands. So that means they have to make their own decisions. Most of the time, expect them to act independently. I fear they won't know signals they cannot receive, a signal that only countries and city-states can distinguish, one that marks the territory of Ursus. A terrible storm is brewing within the city. Chaos, whether caused accidentally or deliberately, will permeate everywhere like thick smoke. They're a step ahead of me, and their seeds of ruin has already been sown. What's your conclusion? Conflicts brewing within Reunion. How are you so sure? I've seen the same thing unfold countless of times across this land. Is there something you're not telling me? 
I've said pretty much everything I needed to say. As for the rest, we'll cross there, those bridges when we get to them. Even if we're still just preparing for war, efficiency still matters. I mean, that's true, I agree with that. Please help me notify the members of Team R4, Doctor. Have them take these devices. Hold on. Is there a problem? Don't these belong to Rosmontis? Yes. You seem to know more about Rosmontis than the conversation you had in the bright bioprocessing unit indicated. I saw her getting ready to fight. Never expected she'd have the power to use a device like this. Every elite operator has a considerable amount of strength. We expect them to take charge. So you haven't had the time to understand how Rosmontis fights. But just to get this out of the way, there are some things they should not be shouldering alone. As a field commander, a necessary part of your job is to help relieve the pressure of on these operators. In this upcoming battle, you may make some shocking discoveries. Huh? Very few people aren't shocked after watching Rosmontis fight. Make sure you're ready for it. Makes me wonder. Dr. Didina, you're here! We intercepted an enemy patrol squad, steadily handling the situation. Has the fighting already started? Doctor, your position there is kind of risky. I think you probably want to move. I just got here! Right there, behind you. Doctor, it's really dangerous to stand next to her. Enemy. What do you mean? Rosmontis? Enemy. Doctor, those are the ones who killed my family. Enemies. Where did this rage come from? Rosmontis, what happened? Stretching! Thank you! Okay. Doctor, step aside. Get out of the way. I'm not like Amia. Amia's arts can go around her friends to strike her enemies. But not me. I can't. So don't stand between me and my fight. My throat's all good. Gah! That girl, the one carrying that box! What's going on? What's wrong with my eyes? I can't see anything! My eyes! My face! It hurts! It hurts! Hydrating? Done. Something's crushing my head! No. It's been a long time since I crushed anyone to death. Those swords. Oh, those swords! Those swords! Rosmontis? Reunion. I don't want you in my memories. Any of you. She's kind of scary. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I feel like I should have put him in the front. Oh well. So far, so good. Destroyed! Shoot, I forgot.
Oh yeah, I need to attack them. Ah, uh, I don't think I have someone. I shall protect you. No, I'm okay there. Okay, good. There we go. I shall protect you. Almost hit around it, guys. Okay, so far we're okay. Almost dozed off. Actually, I could probably get rid of her now. And then add in. There we go. So far, we're okay. I think we could speed it up a bit more. Oh, My never mind. That's. Yours now. Oh boy, there's so many. Uh. Take flight. Hmm. That should be good. Okay, what the heck? Why is there so many? I'm right here, Doctor. Are you afraid of me? Oh my god, so many! That's not my specialty. Don't worry, my poison is not contagious. Come on, heal! No! I'll do my best. Here's something yummy for you! Oh boy! Oh no! Come on, you have to live! No! No! <laughs> this is, uh, bad. Come on, is there no one? Ah, No! Ah, how was that glass? Okay, well, now I know that there's so many at the end. I have to defeat the one that makes them strong first. Okay, I think I kind of have an idea. Because the placement of things wasn't exactly to my preference. Let's see where no, it seems better. Okay, I think this should be... Uh, one, two... As far as teamwork's concerned, I don't mind. Okay, I think I have a plan now. Let's just see how it goes <laughs> first.
How do I... Can I reach them? It's a little far, though. Can I reach it with you? Nope. How do I reach them? They're so far! Uh... I guess I have no choice. Oh boy, that My thing's already moving. Not ideal. My power is all yours now. Is all yours now. Okay, there we go. Here. You will not come to harm. Um I guess it can't be helped. I'll have to do it like that for now. Okay, they're coming. They would come forward. Ah, there we go. I shall protect you. I shall protect you. Who who died? So far, so good. Oh, 
Oh, what a relief. Everything's going well so far. Thank goodness I built her. At least enough. Ah, much better. Bloodied, torn, pierced. This isn't right. Us, enemies, people. Wailing, screaming, groaning. This isn't right. I can't take this anymore. You have a question. Ask. Doctor, is this your first time seeing Rosmontis fight? I know it's hard to watch, but... I'll handle it. You go tend to the wounded enemies who can't fight anymore. Also among them are communications personnel, relaying orders and intelligence. If they're allowed to escape, it puts our whole operation at risk. Roger. How old is she? 14. And you're letting her? People, please, let me through. What happened here? I just finished handling the... Doctor? What? Doctor, did you just call me? Who sent you out to fight? Uh, uh. Who sent you here? Doctor? This is too cruel. This is terrible. You should not have to suffer through this. Why would you let you... Why would they let you do this? Counts it. This isn't right. I did. What are you talking about? You did what? I did. I chose to fight. I want to fight. There are some feelings I can only express experience on the battlefield. Protecting my friends and family is the only way I can feel complete. Rhodes Island needs me. The world is calling my name to prevent more people like me from coming into it. Still though, you can't... You can't... Does death care that I am a child? Would war or disease spare someone because they are a child? When Amiya or Stan on the battlefield... Who looks at us and thinks children? We're monsters, aren't we, Doctor? No! That's just how you see yourself. No, Doctor. No, Doctor Lina. It doesn't matter who what, what I am. I just want to make a difference with my family. Do you know Scout? What? Do you know Ace? Yes. It's already been a few days since I washed any of their materials. I've forgotten a lot. But I only forgot. I'm not like you, Doctor, who threw everything away. Oh, dang. Rosmontis? No, I didn't mean that, but you get it, Amia. I get it, but just... Don't say it like that. Hmm, fine. I've lost bits and pieces of things. Lots of pictures and words. Those feelings... Feelings I can't say. Only Amia can understand. But they never truly left me. Doctor, I feel like you're complicated. Even more complicated than they say. They say I'm complicated too. Some of them are scared of me. Some of them say I shouldn't be like this. But they don't know why I'm like this. They don't know what I've been through. Why does my heart suddenly ache? Why do I want to cry now of all times? Even though I can't remember anything. Why are my eyes still sore? Why are my lips dry? Who left the stain in the corridor? And why hasn't it been cleaned? Why do I feel worried when I break a vase? But also strangely happy? Why do I feel disgust from looking at flowers? But wonder from looking at bugs? What happened during all that time I can no longer remember? Why do these emotions keep welling up within me? Every operator I feel has their own unique differences. And when I lose them, 
those feelings also disappear. But why? Why do we even have emotions? Why do my tears keep flowing? When even when I can't feel anymore? Didn't I already forget everything? Mm. But Rosmontis never wanted me to take her feelings away. These sudden surges of emotion belong to her. No matter what they are. They belong only to Rosmontis. I can't interfere with them. As long as Rosmontis still has hope somewhere inside of her, I won't do that. Because it's up to her to choose what to do. She can also choose to forget. To truly forget. What'll happen to Rosmontis? I don't know that much about her. Dr. Dina, Rhodes Island has a strict screening process for our operators. Many of them apply for combat roles and we reject most of those. We look at lots of different metrics to decide if an operator is fit for combat. Combat ability, tactical aptitude, discipline, and physical fitness are all important parameters, but that barely scratches the surface. People often have difficulty trusting one another when they're on an actual mission. Osmontis is here because she trusts in our orders and objectives, and we trust in her abilities and judgment. Please believe in me, Doctor. No, believe in us! You'll slowly begin to see the colors of her emotions. Still child soldiers. Yeah, that's true. Doctor, thank you for fighting alongside Blaze. Why? You don't have to thank me. Blaze needs more people fighting alongside her. And I want to see her smile. I want to see you too. I want to see the one Ace and Scout always talked about. Too bad I don't remember my past. Here you are. You found me this time. She uses heavy machinery to quickly and effectively destroy the enemy while at the same time exhibiting astonishing self-control and adaptiveness. Rosmontis is one of the Rhodes Island's greatest annihilation specialists. As such, the way she treats people and the way she speaks may worry you. The way she fights and its contrast with her appearance is indeed very cruel. Blaze running around with her chainsaw may be easier to accept, but the destruction of when Rosmontis takes the field is much harder to stomach. If it will help you sleep at night, I can make you a promise. If it will help at all. Rosmontis almost never kills. Though her tactics seem to singularly aim for that outcome, she actually focuses on disabling the enemy's combat abilities. Take the last battle, for example. All the enemies were disarmed, and not a single one died to Rosmontis' attacks. She also has much more control over her weapons than she once did. Of course, whether or not we can keep the prisoners alive depends entirely on our ability to destroy Reunion's leadership. Only then will we be able to send rescue teams into the core city. But sometimes we must use lethal force in order to accomplish our goals. Some loss of life is inevitable. You still look disturbed. Is this all beyond your ability to accept? I can't accept this! It doesn't make sense! You might not be able to accept the truth either. Her terrifying origanium arts and incredible perception are not the only reasons why Rosmontis is an elite operator. Rosmontis demonstrates these qualities because she became an elite operator. We made our judgment not on whether to send her to battle, but how disastrous the consequences might be if we didn't let her become a fighter like this. What kind of consequences? Worst case scenario, her arts leak out from her body and pushes her to kill, subconsciously or otherwise. Humans killing each other has become the normal state of things. Even so, most people still hold their weapons and staves themselves. Whether or not someone who has lost her sense of self can still be called a person is another topic I'm not interested in discussing. But humanity grapples with the extent and manifestation of this problem. When you deprive a human being of her sentience, what is left? What is created? When that creation deprives us of our lives, who is at fault? The one who created the weapon, the one who used the weapon, or the one we treat as a weapon. I'll figure it out myself. Another riddle? As we move on to the next battle, I may be able to teach you more. By the way, on the issue of her age, Amiya puts on an air of maturity that may have you fooled. Maybe, maybe not. A young creature known as a deadly weapon won't be seen as an ordinary child just because she looks young. 
Not to mention all that they've been through. Take what you need. It's time to head to the surface. What about Amiya? Is she a weapon too? You can ask her yourself. This is something you should hear from her. Castle, stop right there! Warfarin, I was just leaving. Whatever it is, make it quick. You know the prophecy, don't you? Yes, there's nothing you don't know. Prophecy? Is that not why you allowed Amiya to go? Amiya is the commander of this operation, as well as the one who suggested it. But as young as Amiya is, how could she command? Warfarin, how long has it been since we left Kazdal? <gasps> Be precise or I'm leaving. Two months? Warfarin, stop joking around. I know what you mean. She's grown up. Yes, Warfarin. Time flies. Age progression in... In... Cowtuses? Kind of hard to... Uh, in Cowtuses. I'm going to assume that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> I could be wrong though, but you know. It has been... Uh, and vampires. Vampires? Is radically different. It has been three years since we left Kazdel. Huh. It may feel like a short time for you, but Amiya has matured a lot. Answer my first question! The prophecy! Yeah, the prophecy. <laughs> the last Wendigo will die at the hands of the Lord of Fiends? Correct! I'm familiar with that guerrilla group and their leader! I'm certain it's him! It makes me curious. The original phrasing of the prophecy was the son of whore Tekr uh, Tekkers. Traitor to Sarkaz and disreputable end of the bloodline will be executed by the Lord of Sarkaz. Mm. Some prophecy. Whether or not there's an extension of their bloodline, there are still many Wendigos living their lives in Columbia and Ursus. Warfarin is indeed a vampire, very old one. Ah, okay, okay. That's good to know. That is, a few dozen can be called an army. And considering the context of the time, you should view it as a threat. Many people do not want to see the Wendigos leave Castell. They don't? Interesting. It wasn't either of us who said it. And since you still remember, you must have found it important, no? Are you getting old? Since when did you- <laughs> I mean, isn't she already old? <laughs> Since when do you believe in prophecies and sarcasm witchcraft? Old? M me? <laughs> I contacted Oropathy. Or I contracted Oropathy. Death is always here with me, waiting for the right time to strike. Warfarin, my life is no doubt much shorter than you think. Hey! Must we be so morbid? I'm not your little girl, Closure. I won't let you keep skirting the topic. The issue raised is quite morbid. Never mind. Hear me, Kalsit. The others may not say as much to you, but I will. He is one of the very few left among us. I am no bleeding heart, no goodly busybody, but we are sarcasm. I am a vampire and the old man is a wendigo, but we are the same. This world is a tough place for Sarkaz. I hope we can return to Castle if possible or come with us. Closure is also a vampire. Oh, okay. This is a lot more vampires than I expected in the operators. I'm not, Warfarin. I'm not Sarkaz. So you refuse? No. I'll do what I can. Even I remember him, Warfarin. Your promise is stronger than anything. Don't get your hopes up that this will be easy. But this time you'll be there. As long as Dr. Kalsa makes her best effort, I'll accept the outcome. Maybe you haven't heard, but your proposal came too late. Some things have already unfolded, and rather unfortunately. Some time ago, an infected clinic in Chernobyl called 
Azazel, or Azazel, traded information with us. I learned some more information about the Wendigo in reunion service. What's more, and you should know this well, anyone who stands against the most brutal blade in Ursus will soon, we soon learn whether it tastes of salt or rust. Nobody should knowingly place our operators in danger. Some patients' days are numbered, but that number depends on the doctor treating them. It's all up to us. It's all up to us. And I told you before, you may have forgotten. I won't discipline you for it, but I may do something to put an end to it once and for all. You are not to say I'm frightening Warfarin. We've been over this. Do not, under any circumstances, even at Rhodes Island, speak of the Lord of Fiends. Ever. Wait. All hands at ease. Prosmontis, am I getting this right? Mm, yes, I feel it too. Dr. Didina, something unexpected here. What is it? I'm not totally sure, but... The core city might be slowing down? Could it be? Maybe not. Medical team, we'll see. please take tissue samples from the infected. We need to see the composition of the infection in this area. Wait, let me... <laughs> Ciao, Doc. See... Hmm. Okay, well, either way, like I said, it's going to be a pretty short stream today, mostly because I have to prepare now for the kid tonight fostering to meet their new potential adopter. Hoping it goes well. But I'm sorry that today's stream is pretty short. Usually it would at least be an hour and a half or two hours, but uh, today I have to keep it pretty short because of that. But it makes me realize that I can't believe one note is like literally 43 minutes. <laughs> it's pretty shocking. I hope it works out well with the kitchens. Thank you. I hope so too. The Lord of Fiends will be an important topic to keep an eye out for the story. I would assume so, especially since it concerns prophecy and Amia. If that's the case, then it's got to be something very, very important. Maybe even later down the road of the main story. I don't know how far the main story is right now. Is it like nine chapters? Ten? I'm, I'm not really sure. Actually, twelve. I, I keep losing track. But either way, I can clearly see that we're actually finally starting to get into the more intense stuff, or not intense stuff, but the core, the core plot. I feel like we're getting hints of it at the very least here. So it's making me. Pretty excited to see much more lore bits regarding Amia and now something to do with the... What is it? Prophecy? That's gonna be quite... It's giving me like the feeling of this is going to be good. <laughs> oh, so it's 13 chapters. Okay, thank you so much for the clarification. Then I assume the Chinese server is probably way ahead of that. I wonder how many chapters is out for them. Maybe like 15, 16, I'm not really sure. But I do like that. We're finally starting to get a bit more intense with- Oh, it's only 14? Okay, okay, cool. So I, I like the fact that we're getting more into the more important core plot lines and- I mean, obviously we're still technically Lungmin and Ursus stuff, but... Even so, we're getting hints of more things, much more than the current chapter that we're, or at least much more than the beginning. Because beginning, it felt more like they were building, they were doing a lot of world building and trying to get used to and understand the basic of the politics going on in the world. But now I'm starting to feel like we're we're getting a bit more of the actual like major stuff that. They wanted to really talk about and touch upon slowly but surely giving us the throwing the little baits at us like 
cookies, Not crumbs even. and to our face <laughs> without giving us Don't the cookie. <laughs> I want a cookie. Pretty Anyways. Yeah, so I think they were definitely laying the groundwork and I think we're finally done with laying the groundwork and we're starting to we're in the transitional period of moving away from the groundwork and into more of the important bits that truly affect most likely us, the doctor, and also Amia and potentially Calcid and the people in that little group, if I can even call it a group at this point, within Rhodes Island. So I'm quite excited to learn more about that. I'm amazed that though, that each note is like almost like 47 minutes. Like I did not expect it to be that long, you know? But alas, that's just the case. But I do think that I'm looking forward to seeing how this leads. Mostly because I, we, I, I wasn't really sure what the main plot was for our nights. Like I knew that we were fighting as, you know, reunion trying to let the infected live a more normal life and obviously trying to cure. But it just felt like something was missing. And I think this is the missing part that I was looking for. So I'm really looking forward to seeing like what other stuff they're going to reveal in this chapter before we get into chapter eight and nine and all the other chapters. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh yeah, by the way, I will be focusing on this guy. I think I want to make him E1 and then build up his skills and then it should be good. That way I have at least two DPS. Oh, I really hope so. Because <laughs> I know you guys recommended Lessing before, so I'm hoping at least with two it'll be a lot easier. And then if I can borrow someone during like a boss stage, then it'll be a lot easier than if I didn't have a DPS at all, which was a struggle before. So gonna go for that. I know some of you guys recommended some other people and I know I do want to level up Pinecone as well. So I think Pinecone will be the person after Lessing or maybe once I reach E1 with this guy, then I'll focus on Pinecone for some more AOE stuff since I clearly need more of it in this one. It's so difficult without an AOE. I didn't realize how difficult it was or at least how difficult I made it <laughs> by not having a DPS at all. Oh, the pain. Anyways, <laughs> I will end it here for today. My kids, I hope you enjoyed me playing that one note of chapter seven, which was a lot longer than I expected. And we got through and got more lore bits from there unexpectedly. So let's edge this into our memory and keep it safe. And as always, formally inviting you to my next tea party. The so-called anime enthusiast Fox. Who's that? This was Dina. So until the next one then. Bye! Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you guys in the next one.